We have to reach way back to the judge dad days to remember no contact guy. No contact means no contact. I have followed his case for months and months and months, like to the point to where we're almost at a year. We had a PCC last Tuesday at that time. Uh, the discovery was not available. I requested it. The discovery came last night after hours at 533. It's paper discovery only. That's all you're getting. I'm sorry. Judge, there's there's bodywear camera. There's, uh, you're going to have to wait for that. This is a probable cause hearing. I understand my client is entitled to effective assistance of counsel even at this time. I understand. So he can, he can lay it on the judge. You're entitled to paper discovery on this on the domestic. And if, if there's something with a body cam, you're, you're entitled to that for trial. Are you asking me to adjourn the case? I'm asking you to continue, yes, to continue the exam so that I can properly prepare. And again, this came in after hours last night. It wasn't like I got timely paid. You know what I used to do when I was a lawyer? I used to read them the day of, and I did felonies. I'm not going to adjourn this. I'm sorry. We're going to go forward. Can I at least finish the record? There's also reports that are reflected in the body of this report regarding prior incidents, and I believe to be prior false reports, that are going to be you know, important for your honor's uh, credibility determination. And I... I I don't understand. I, don't, I believe that to be good cause why the, the people should be allowed to. Right, listen, I don't like it. They should be getting into discovery earlier. When did you get it to him, Mr. Kazak? Your Honor, I redacted it last night. I sent it to counsel after I got his email. And, well, I redacted it last night. I sent it to him last night, Your Honor. I had another hearing this morning, Judge. I actually Zoomed from you know your conference room. I don't think it's fair to Mr. Crane that I have to fly by the seat of my pants on a, a felony examination. It's just not right. And How long, long is the report? 18 pages. And, and to the extent that... Uh, you know, we've got the, the proper precautions in place and, and he's been ordered to stay away and that's been adhered to. We got a family law court presiding over the aspects of parenting time and custody. Every precaution is in place. He's adhering to his GPS tether. I don't think you need the adjournment. I'll give you one week. You're going to try to get the body cams, but it's not going to be a, it's not going to be grounds for a, an adjournment or whatever else there is. But we're going to do it next week. So I'll, I'll adjourn it one week. Um, I mean, it's an ongoing problem. I'm not going to deny that. It's it's an ongoing problem. It has been. They don't have enough resources. I don't. So <clears throat> I can do this at 10 next week. This will be in person. You got to give it to them quicker than that, Mr. Kazak. I know you're overwhelmed. I get it. I understand. But you got to get it to them before the night before. I I personally, well, I'll just let it go with that. Thank we'll you. set it for 10 o'clock in the morning. That'll be in person. And, and just one last matter. It's my indication, that, in my understanding, rather, that the victim is, is no longer residing in the property. She does need to stand by to get some personal effects out of there. But I'd ask you to modify the bonds. We can return to this house. Is that true, Mr. Kazak? And your I don't believe she's currently residing at the residence. I, uh, we we're going to ask, I believe she needs to return there to re remove some additional property, but um, I think that can be facilitated today with a uh, civil standby from the police department, Your Honor. Wait a minute. He wasn't to return to 32 Rorick. Who's living at 32 Rorick right now? Nobody, Judge. She moved out. Is that right, Ms. Duco? Yeah. Come on back up here. Come on up here if you would. Okay, your name? Did you move out of the residence? Yes, I did. I just have some things left there that I would like to do. Okay. All right, here's what I'll do. Give me a bunch. Yeah. Can you get all of those items out of there today, ma'am? Well, you got a GPS tether on, right? Yes, sir. So that makes that complicates things. Yeah, that's why I, I have two daughters that go to review schools and they're up really with this as well. That's why I just would try to get some stability back for my children by going back to my house. And I didn't know if we can modify something with the tether unit or like I said, Your Honor, I am not here to cause any problems for you. What's that? I am not here to cause any problems for you, Judge. Whatever you can do, I appreciate it. You're not causing any problems for me. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to handle this. Who owns the residence? I rent, Your Honor. You rent? Yes, sir. You're not on the lease? Yeah. No. 
my concern here, frankly, is I don't want, how did you spend any time you were in custody? 11 days, Your Honor. How long, how long did it take you to post the bond? It, the day after I saw you, it was- And in, you were in custody on that? Yes, sir. And I, which I've I expressed had. is is completely inappropriate. I mean, it just is. So you're telling me the Wayne County Jail took 10 days or <coughs> thereabouts to affix the GPS tether, right? Yes, sir. I mean, that's just, it's just, uh, I, it's just not right. Yes, sir. But here's my concern. Yes, sir. I start playing around with the tether now. You might find yourself in that predicament again. You might find yourself in that predicament again. So I'm going to suggest strongly that we leave the status quo as is until next Tuesday. Lisa, in the meantime, you we can get, the prosecutor can provide you with the victim's address so that the tether unit can modify the tether requirement because one of the conditions is he's not to be within two miles of the victim, her residence or her place of employment. If I let him go back there, counsel, right now with that tether, there's going to be a violation. If I make him go downtown right now and get the bond terms modified, the GPS tether modified, he might find himself in that predicament. This is beyond my control. I've expressed my displeasure with it repeatedly. Well, I, under, I understand the concern and find it to be most unfortunate that that's the reality. So do I. But it apparently is. And So here's what I'm going to do. Point. I'm keeping this bond in effect until next Tuesday. I'm hoping that the victim's advocate, your name, please. You're, Rachel. You're the victim's advocate. Flora is. Well, wait a minute. You're kind of the victim's advocate, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm just hoping you guys can work with... Uh, the tether unit, I'm asking you to convey whatever information about where she's going to be because somehow it's got to get conveyed adequately to the tether unit so that he's not sitting in jail for multiple days while they try to verify where the victim is. That's the issue. If it weren't for the GPS tether, I'd let you go back there right now or at least after today was my, was my uh, initial plan. This is, let me check something here. Yeah, and I don't feel comfortable without uh, without this in light of the fact that he has two priors, counsel. That's what I'm doing. I'm holding this, uh, I'm gonna continue the bond as is. I'm gonna ask you to try to get with them and figure out a way to, so that this tether isn't, when he takes it down, isn't going to require him to sit in jail again. And I sympathize with you. It's not fair. It's absolutely not fair. And Your Honor, there was one other concern that people wanted to address regarding a uh, potential contact violation involving. If he had contact, we're talking about a whole different ball game now. You know he wouldn't have done that. Okay. You're not suggesting the defendant had a had a violated the no contact. Yes, Your Honor. Because the defendant violating a no contact on a third offense domestic violence would know that any judge between here and Tuscaloosa would have a big problem with that. So you're going to put on, you're going to put on evidence of this right now, or are you going to simply bring it up? Uh, Your Honor, if the court would take evidence. Yes. The, 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 the court is here. Okay. Who do you want me to hear from? Uh, Your Honor, the people like to hear from the complaining witness uh, in this case. Raise your right hand, Ms. Duco. You sound to swear affirm. Under penalties of perjury, the testimony you'll give in these proceedings will be the whole truth to help you got. I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, you got to keep your voice up. Okay. I don't want you to be nervous. Prosecutor's going to ask you some questions. Defense is going to have the opportunity to ask you some questions. And then we're going to go from there. Um, counsel, I'm going to ask you to sit, step back a second here so defense lawyer and, and defendant um, can have a seat at the counsel table. Ma'am, why don't you have a seat at the witness chair here?
Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And good morning, Miss. Uh, how, how do you pronounce your last name? Duclo. Duclo. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, my understanding is that um, uh, you had a um, that you currently uh, your children go to an uh, elementary school in the area. Uh, my oldest. And uh, were you there? Uh, were you there recently uh, picking uh, picking up uh, your child? Yes. All right. And uh, did you see anyone uh, there at the time you were picking up your child? Yes, I seen his mother, Gail Crane. She parks on Ray Street in her white Jeep, picking up both of his children. Right. And you see, and what day was this? Monday. And that's uh, Monday of this week. Of last week. Last week. And um, did you see anyone else there at the time? Um, as I went to go around to skip the extra line on the back side of the memorial, um, Stephen is there driving, waving at me as if he could still find me. Now you say, say that again. Um, I His mother parks on Ray Street every day to pick up his children. I am on Coaster. I park at my mother's house. I walk up to the corner and my daughter comes to me. I see his children go to his mother. I walk back to my car and as I go, I turn left as she did that day too. Who's she? His mother. And as I go straight and I hit that stop sign, he's right there just smiling and waving at me. Now, was, uh, now were you on the sidewalk at the time? Or you the Driving my car. And now we're seeing a vehicle at the time as well. Yes. And now you say he, are you referring to Mr. Um, Crane? And um, he just, and how far was he away from you when he did that? Uh, we went side by side cars. And about how, and uh, did he turn his whole body towards you and wave, or is it just? I just seen a smile and a wave, and I didn't want to look any further. And he was directed, and uh, he, he waved towards you? Again. Yes. And about um, and was he uh, driving at slow rate of speed or high rate of speed at that time? I'm just slow. And uh, Your Honor, I don't believe this time I have any further questions for Miss uh, Miss Dupo. Any questions? Yes, Miss Dupo. You said you you walked to your mother's house up to, to the the, the pickup area. Walk from my mother's house. Yeah. Yes. And then now, but you said that you were in a car where you encountered. Yes, child. after the fact that I got my daughter. Wait a minute. Keep your voice up. I'm not understanding either. I, I. Okay. So, so you walked up there. I beforehand, when you have to go pick up your children, right. you walk up to the school and get them, and then you go back to the car with your child to leave. I was. Leaving. I see. So you parked your car. Yes, I had my car parked, and as I went to leave. As I got back in my car with my children and I went to drive away, that is when I encountered Stephen. Okay, and, and you, you don't dispute that Mr. Crane had a right to be there to pick up his. No, he didn't. But his mother was there that day. His right? mother was there on my street. Yes. And if she were to testify here in open court that Stephen wasn't in the area with her, that she would be lying? Well, she passed right by him. Okay, so she would be lying if that were the case. I believe so, yeah. Okay. You don't know what he was smiling at or was like. Yes. This was, we had a hearing last Tuesday. Were you aware of that? No, I'm not aware of anything. I wasn't told yeah, anything at all. You weren't aware that this, this case was up for, for hearing last Tuesday? No, I just got a call yesterday saying that I had to be here. Okay. And did you bring it to anybody's attention last Monday when it happened? Yes, the Riverview Police. Okay. The what police? Riverview, because that's did where it happened. Report? Yes, I made a report. I have nothing for the judge. Excuse me. In um, uh, in the in the car vehicle you were driving, have you had that vehicle for a while. Yes. Did you have the vehicle at the time you were initially in the relationship with Mister. Uh, um, it would have been um after school, so it was around three fifty to three fifty five. Okay, no, no, I and then oh. had you had the vehicle that you were driving for a while? Do I have it here? No, no, right. at the time this happened. I'm, I'm just trying yes, to I have the same vehicle. Okay, all right. And <laughs> you had had the vehicle when you were in a relationship? With yes. Your vehicle? All right. Okay. 
And is this, do uh, you pick up your daughter on a regular basis? Every day. Your Honor, I don't have any further questions at this time. Anything else? No, Your Honor. You can step step down, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank Do you have any other witnesses? No, thank you, Your Honor. You have the, Do you have any witnesses your thank client you wish to testify? I'll call my client's mother, Gail, trying to stand. Okay. Come on up here, ma'am. Right up to the witness okay. chair there. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. You soundly swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you will give in these proceedings will be the whole truth out you've got. Yes, I do. Have a seat, please. Could you state your full name and spell your full name for my recorder, please? My name is Gail Crane Atkins, G A I L. Last name is C R A Y N E hyphen A D K I N S. Thank you. You can proceed, Mr. McCurry. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Crane Atkins, what is your relationship to the defendant, Stephen Crane? His mother. Okay. And you heard the testimony this morning of uh, Ms. Duco, did you not? Yes. Okay. And you recall the circumstances last Monday when you picked up your grandkids? Yes, I pick them up every day. Okay. Because he's usually at work. He's usually at work. When was Mr. Crane at work that day? Yes, he was. Was he with you or near you at the time you picked up your grandchildren? No. Did you see Ms. Duco when you were there? No. Okay. So it, as far as you're concerned, there would have been a factual impossibility for Mr. Crane to be there and smile and wave at Ms. Duca. Well, I can't really say if he did or not, sir, because I was going towards um, Fort Street on Longstar after I picked up my girls. Because if you go on the school side, it's very crowded. So I'd go down and go down the lake and come up Longsdorf to avoid the traffic. Okay, but Mr. Crane wasn't there. Your son wasn't there. He wasn't picking up the kids, uh, no. You... Okay. you said he was at work? He goes to work every day. Okay. I don't know. I don't never know what time he gets off. But that day, that afternoon, you didn't see him there? At Not all? at the school. Okay. I have nothing for you. Any questions, Mr. Crane? Yeah, and then you indicated that he, he wasn't there picking up his kids, but you don't know where he was at. Would that be fair? Well, I do not understand. You indicated that you that you said he was at work, but do you know how do you know he was at work? Well, that day I passed him because he was going, to, I believe he was going to his sister's house. She lives also in River, Riverview. Okay, so you passed him and when you're going to school or coming back from the school? After I picked up his children. Okay. You passed him going from the school then? Mm hmm Okay. Is that a yes? Yes. Sorry. And so it was nearby the school at that time? On the back side of the school. I know for anything else, Mr. Cody. No, 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 you can have a seat, ma'am. Thank you very much. Any other witnesses? No, thank you. Great. Do you have any other? We call Mr. Crane, Judge. Come on up, sir. Raise your right hand. The soundly swear affirm. The soundly swear affirm under penalties of perjury, the testimony you've given these proceedings would be the whole truth so help you've got. Yes, sir. Okay, you have a seat. You can proceed. Sir, you've heard the testimony this morning, have you not? Yes, Your Honor. Did you yes, see Ms. Duco that morning? No, sir. Uh, you didn't smile and wave at her? No, sir. I have not seen her since the day of this incident here, sir. Okay. Did you have any reason to, to violate your bond? <laughs> No, sir, not you spent at all. 11 days. In yes, custody. sir. And my kids are uprooted from this. I would not in any shape or form compromise this case, sir. And do you, do you believe Ms. Duco may know what to say or to do to get you into further trouble? 100%, sir. She was with me when I was going through some other stuff with my ex, and she was my witness, and she knows this, this unfortunately, very well. Okay, and so and, and that that day in question, you were on your, on route to your sister's house. I was. I never even seen her. I I got off work after my daughters were out of school. It wasn't even in the same time. Like it was. I'm not sure exactly the time, but it was not nowhere near Kayla, sir. Okay. Nothing for you. Anything, Mr. Kayser? Sir, you were at the school. Were you at the school on on Monday past Monday? No, sir. You weren't at the school. No, sir. You were, you were near this body. Monday or the two weeks ago? No, sir. I was not. Let's slow down. Yesterday was Monday. Yes, sir. That's why I was confused. Slow down. Oh, yes, sir. A week ago yesterday. 
that Monday, were you anywhere near that school? No, sir, I was not. My mother takes them every morning. This week, I was ta I've taken my daughters because I started a little bit later, but I'm nowhere near Ms. Duclo. I have not saw her since the day of this incident, sir. Hey, that's not the question I asked. Were you at the school where Ms. Duclo picks up her children? No, sir. Not, not last Monday? I'm pretty sure I wasn't, sir, because my mom picks them up every day, so I wouldn't be there. When's the last time you went to the school to pick uh, up your kids? Because I don't pick them up. My mom does. I drop them off once in a while, depending on my work schedule, but I never there. I don't. When's the school. last time you went to school after school? Yes, that's my point, Your Honor. I, I, it has been such a long time. My mother and What's my sister. a long time? Months, Your Honor. Actually, since probably since last winter, because I usually work until around five, six o'clock until dusk. In the summer, it's even later. And I, unfortunately, my work, I have sole custody of my two little girls, so I don't have the freedom to be able to accommodate that time schedule. Okay. And and so, sir, um, you weren't anywhere near the school that afternoon? I was driving through the night at the same time as school was letting out. And it's not what I asked. Were you at the school all that afternoon? Oh, no, I was not at school at all. Um, no, sir. You weren't in the area by the school? Um, I'm not at school time, no, sir. That's not what I asked. Were you I, at school? Were you at near the area of the school at the time your children uh, no, leave for the day? No, sir. I was. I would say. I don't know. At least a quarter mile away, and I wasn't even at the time of school getting out here, sir. It was. So after. You were a quarter mile away, and what time were you at? What, what time were you a quarter mile away at? I, to be honest, I'm not sure. Did you hear to... your mom say that she passed you on the way home from school? On Sibley Road, at Sibley Road, where 4th Street is at Sibley. My shop is on Sibley Road. I was coming down Sibley Road to go to my sister's house to get some of my clothing for today. And last Monday? No, this was, I guess it was last Monday. No. Last Monday, you were worried about getting clothes for today? Well, because I never used my overnight, uh, my, what's it called? My, uh, where the police come to... The safe visit, I never used that. So my sister was getting stuff for me cordially as I needed it. And then I didn't have this shirt with me or my tie. Go ahead, Mr. Kazak. Judge, we had court last Tuesday. No, I realize that. But we're talking about last Monday. Right. For last he, Monday in preparation. Okay, fair, fair, fair enough. Go ahead. And and so how far were you away from the school at all the time you were you showing me picked up at? Uh, to be honest here, sir, I mean, I don't even recall the exact time. I, it would be, I never went close to the school. I would say at the closest, the quarter mile, and I don't even believe that would be 100% accurate, sir. And so your, your mother's statement that she saw your vehicle at the backside of the school would be inaccurate. Would that be fair? Because Sibley Road is like Just the to answer his question. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, so your mother's statement that she saw your vehicle at the back, near the back of the side of the school would be inaccurate? Well, I mean, it would be for her perception, it might be accurate on the backside of the school, but the distance to the school is not accurate. No, sir. And so where exactly were you at at the time your children picked up from school? I was side? at work and when they got out of school, sir. And then after the time, I'm not sure exactly the time I was going down Sylvie Road and it is the backside of the school. But I mean, there's a longevity of blocks that was nowhere near the school. I'm sure the tether unit can verify that, sir. And you're familiar with the vehicle that Miss Equal drives, that be fair? Yes, sir. And you see Miss Duclos vehicle near the school that day? No, sir, not at all. I, like I said, I have not saw her since the day of this incident. I haven't seen her vehicle since the day of this incident, and I do not even look for her, sir. I have no reason to violate my bond. I do not want to go back to the county. I have no reason to put a hiccup in this, sir let alone smile or wave whatever she said. I mean, that's just pretty immature, to be honest with you, sir. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right, anything else? No, All right. you can step down. Thank you. Thank Any you, Your Honor. Uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. No, no further witnesses. Well, you know, short of, uh, you know, you, I'm just asking if you have any other witnesses. Well, again, it would be from the tether unit verification and determine where he was last Monday. I think they would bear out that he was on Sibley Road, which I suppose in some people's uh, understanding. Get the victim in here. So I don't need any argument. I don't want the victim to, uh, I want the victim to hear what I'm gonna say though. 
If you want to argue, you can argue. You want to argue? You want to argue? No, you we're argue. not. You want to argue? You I don't want to argue, Judge. I want you just to hear what I'm saying. Listen, if I was going to decide, you can shake your head up and down, side to side, scream and kick, do whatever you're going to say. If I was going to decide whether or not you waved at her and smiled at her, I would say you did. Don't don't shake your head. You are risking a lot. Because I'm serious about this bond condition. Very serious about it. You could lose ten thousand dollars, ten percent. You could have that bond forfeited, and about a hundred thousand, ten percent bond would be set. I'm just telling. You. I think, I think, you wait, I think, you smile, your mother herself, your mother, not your enemy, your mother, yes, said she saw, saw you when she was on her way home from school. I think this was a bond violation. I'm not going to forfeit your bond. But I want to reiterate, apparently I did not do a very good job the first time. I want to reiterate how serious I am about this bond condition. You're in deep water right now. I mean, you're presumed innocent, but if you're convicted of domestic violence third, you're going to have a big problem. And you're not going to make things any better by having any kind of contact. Ms. Duco, if he has any contact with you again, you contact the officer in charge. You tell him exactly what happened. He will then come in and he will swear out a bond violation. And then I will immediately revoke the release, forfeit the bond, and issue a warrant pending a hearing. And then you're going to have a big problem. I wouldn't go anywhere near the school. I told you not to be within two miles of her, her residence or place of employment. There is nobody, certainly not as intelligent as you, that would misunderstand that order. There is nobody that would start thinking it's okay to wave and smile and drive by somebody doing so. I'm telling you, I'm not going to take any action today. Next time, if there's anything like this, you're not going to be this lucky, I promise you. If you think 11 days was bad, the bond, I hope you have a lot of money because it will be high. She would have to have filed a false police report. Maybe she did. I'm not going to comment any further. But I'm telling you, I can tell when people are testifying. You like to, you like to go on. There's no doubt that I'm right about this. Don't do it again. Do we understand one another firmly and completely? Yes, okay. All right. I'll see everybody here for the, uh, the uh, exam next week. This will be in person at 10 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do it. He can either plead or we'll give you the hearing right now. The witness is here. I see in the back. She can testify. You can cross-examine. He can testify. He can remain silent, whatever you choose. Well, I appreciate that, Judge. And, and he'd like to hear it. And, and Come on up here, ma'am. All right. Good enough. No problem. Well, I mean, it just my concern is, is your honor, in a sense, prosecuting i'm not prosecuting i'm gonna ask this witness okay. to tell me what happened i already heard from an officer he was either she either lied to him in which case she's going to have a big problem with no, no, there's not a lot there's no lie okay raise your right state your name ma'am kayla duplo raise your right hand you saw me swear affirm under penalties of perjury the testimony will give in these proceedings will be the whole truth to help you guys yes have a seat your honor yes sir if i may i do have a little bit of information that just came to light since we've been here at court to add okay to this that i'd like to share with you so so you're aware mr crane you can have a seat sir. Okay. Sure. Since I entered the courtroom, um, the 
uh, victim advocate wanted to talk to me along with the victim. It was brought to my attention that the victim received a phone call at 146 since she was here at the, the courthouse. Um, no way. I, this is what's reported to me, Your Honor. Um, it was from a, a phone number other than the defendant, but it was the defendant's voice recognized by the victim that said one word, the word leave. All right. You can have a seat right there. Thanks. Tell me your name again. Kayla Dupa. All right. So you were in court on Tuesday, right? Yes. We had a hearing regarding a possible violation of the no contact provision. Correct? Yes. Have you had any contact at all with Mr. Crane since that date? And I'm talking about since he was in court and you were in court with me and the prosecutor and Mr. McCarty and the officer in charge on Tuesday. I haven't had contact with him, but he tried to get contact with me. Tell me what happened. I went to turn my phone on to check if- um, in the Nice morning, and loud for me. They have to hear you too. To check if my daughter's dentist called me back because she has a dentist appointment that I found out on February 21st. And when I turned the phone on to look, there was a text message from Tuesday at 6.06 saying, what are you doing? AM or PM? PM. And do you know what number that that text was from? Stevens. Are you certain of that? 100%. And what did it say exactly? What you doing? Do you still have, do you have your phone? It's here. You still have the message? Yes. Can I get it and show you? Yes. Can I bring it to you? No, you just stay there for a okay. second. Thank you. And you're telling me that that was at 606, correct? Yeah, 606 p.m. on Tuesday. In, in the exact words were, what are you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Mm -hmm. W-H-A-T-C-H-A. -A. And then doing, D-O-I-N. Did you have any other contact? No, I didn't answer it. I did what you told me to do, which was contact. Um, I tried contacting the court and got a hold of Laura. I contacted Rachel, and then I went to the Trenton Police Department and made the report. Did he have, did he, <clears throat> to your knowledge, did he attempt to contact you in any other form or fashion? Um, today, when I was sitting in the courtroom. What time was that? Um, I can, this was at 1.40. What phone number did that call come in from? 734-508-2750. Uh, did you answer that phone call? Um, this phone does not let you answer on just the speaker. So you have to put it on, you know, the loudspeaker. And I had Anna Duclo answer it because I was nervous. No one's been calling this phone except the court. So um, I had her answer it and blank full day. Stephen's words, leave. Is there any question in your mind but that it was his voice? No. It and this him. happened at what time? At 1.40. Give me that phone number again. Read that into the record, that phone number. 734-508-2766. Did, did you, when the person told you to leave on the other end, who you're identifying as the defendant, Stephen Cream, did you respond in any form or fashion? It hung up the moment after it said leave. Where were you sitting at the time? I was sitting in one of the little rooms outside, the right next to a vending machine. Next it's, to what? It's like the room next to the vending machine okay. out there. I was already in the courtroom, like already in the court. Any questions, Mr. McCarty? Oh, yes, sir. Ma'am, you testified that there was a text sent to you at 6.06 p.m. Uh, this past two, Tuesday saying, what you doing? Yes. And what was the most recent text before that one? Mm -hmm. Sir, I went to text him on Monday, January 23rd at 7.40 okay. and it didn't go through. So that Monday, January 23rd was the morning of the alleged incident, correct? Yes. In fact, roughly a half hour or so before the alleged incident. 
correct? Yeah. So between Monday, January 23rd, and when we were in court on Tuesday, there was absolutely no text whatsoever. Until 6.06. Until 6.06. What After you do? court. Okay. What I understand do? that. Okay. And if you look in your history as it relates to texting with Mr. Crane, your recent history, it goes from blue to green to green to blue to blue to green. Can you explain to the court what, that, what that's all about? Um, Stephen has full control over this phone. And when it's not on a Wi-Fi, it will show up green and it will not go through. So that means the text I sent him January 23rd never went through. Okay. And you have also a capacity or capability anyways to block him. And he's not. Okay. Uh, and so the fact that he's not blocked, at least evidence is there was no attempts to contact you between January 23rd before charges were ever even filed and Tuesday. Correct? Except at the school. Well, and then that, that wasn't a text. No, but that okay. was an attempt. I'm sorry? That was an attempt in my form of finding me. Well, it's certainly no secret where you were. I mean, you, you go to the school every day, right? As, yeah. as, 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 as the mother of my child. Right. Is. Okay. Okay. So uh, going back to 140 this afternoon, you say that call came in? Yeah. Or 146? 140. 140. Okay. And you lost me a little bit about your testimony. How did you answer that call? Um, this phone, the speaker doesn't work, so it has to be on speakerphone. Okay. Anna answered it on speakerphone inside of that little room. Okay. Anna being the victim's advocate? Um, no. As okay. a witness. Okay. A witness in this well, case? If she needs to be, yes. Well, judge, She's you're... the one that answered the phone when that number came through. Is Anna Sophie's aunt? Well, yes. So she's a listed witness in this case. Yes. Judge, I'd wait. You got to keep your voice. Yeah. Can we sequester that, that that witness, Judge? If she's sure, thank I'll you. I'll be happy to order that. <clears throat> no, sequester. You're going to have to have a seat out in the hall, man. Let me clarify one thing. You said 5082766. What were the first numbers? The area code. 734. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. So because your your phone has a certain malfunction, you have to put it on speaker to hear the, the uh, caller on the other yes. end. Yes. Okay. And when that happened, you overheard somebody say leave. <laughs> And yes, and then it directly hung up. They did. Okay. And it's your testimony that you recognize that as being Steve's voice. Yes. Okay. So it's, you attribute Steve to be the caller behind the 734-508-2766 number. Yes. Do you I know where Steve was at 140? No, I was in a room. Would it surprise you to learn that he was in my vehicle in the parking lot? No. That wouldn't surprise you. I don't know where he would be. Okay. You ever sent anybody a text by accident or have an unintended recipient? No. No, you've never done that? Never met to text one person and then accidentally text another? Text another? No. no. Okay. Thank you. No further witness, or no further, further questions of this witness. And you're, you're, there's no question in your mind, but that, that was Mr. Crane. I want this is really important. Yes. I'm talking about the the phone call this afternoon. I was yes, I believe it was him. His voice, it just the direct words of leave, and then hung up. Like I, there couldn't even be a word said after he said leave, and it was just hung up. All right. You can, have, unless you have another question, you can step down. Do you have any other questions? Okay. You can have a seat. Thank you. Do you want to call somebody? I do, Mr. Crane. Okay. All right. So now I have Detective Cavasso. So you can go ahead and proceed, Mr. McCurry. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Crane, can you say your name for the record? Stephen Michael Crane. Uh, Mr. Crane, I want to bring your focus, your attention to the circumstances on Tuesday of this week, that being February 14th. 
Yes, you recall that day? Yes, sir. You recall being in court that morning? 100% I do, sir. Okay, you recall having a, a, a bond violation hearing relative to whether or not you saw uh, the complaining witness in this case and smiled and waved at her? Yes, sir. Okay. And, I, and you, you understood the listen, court? Sir. Listen, you're not going to help yourself if you don't just answer his question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, uh, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. You heard the judge's ruling in that regard. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. That, I mean, to paraphrase it quite a bit, if you so much as like fart in her direction, you're going to jail. Yes, sir. You understood that? Yes, sir. Okay. What did you do later on that afternoon? I went, left court. I When I left court, I went to work, got out of work. I got home to my mother's house at about 5.50, 5.55-ish. Okay. When you got to your mother's house, what did you learn? I found out that my youngest, my seven-year-old had 101.1, 101.5 fever, and my 12-year-old had a massive ear problem, ear infection, ear aches. Okay. And your oldest daughter, what her what is her name? Kylie Crane. And how old Kylie's 11? 12. 12. And your younger daughter is Kristen. Kristen. How old's Kristen? Seven. Does Kylie have an iPhone, an Android, or none of the above? iPhone, sir. And how about Kristen? An Android, sir. Okay. And after, where were you when you uh, learned of their illness, for lack of a better term? When I came home, as soon as I walked in the door, when I got to my mother, she had let me know. So I walked in to see my daughters, and Kristen was laying down sleeping still, and Kylie was laying in a dark room, and then I went downstairs, sir. Okay. So uh, you, you learned of their situation a little before 6 p.m. Yes, right. sir. Okay, and then uh, you went down in the basement. Yeah, to get my work clothes off. Okay, yes, and at some point, did you text uh, either one of your daughters uh, regarding whatever was on, on your mind? Yes, sir. And who did you text? At first, I it was Kristen asking what she was doing upstairs. Okay, and you recall exactly what your text was? Yes, sir. And what was it? To Kristen, it was what you're doing upstairs. And then I believe it was, uh, you have to wake up because she was laying down and I didn't want her to sleep through the evening. Well, would it refresh your recollection if you were to look at your phone and see exactly what you texted and when? Yes, sir. May I approach the witness, Judge? Sure. And what did you text Christian, Kristen rather, on Tuesday? Oh, uh, what you doing upstairs? You need to come, you need to get up, sweetheart. Okay. And what time did you text Kristen that? The 608. Okay. So at 608, you tested what you doing upstairs. Yes, sir. Okay. And then when was the next test? Text rather. Counsel, wait a minute. 611. Uh, slow down one second. Um I just noticed the victim back in here with the victim's advocate. I just want to be clear, you only wanted the other person out, right? Or not? Well, I no, I think they both should be. Well, I don't disagree. You, you, you're going to have to go out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're out. Oh, thank you, Jeff. So at 6.08 p.m., you texted Kristen. How do you spell Kristen? K R I S T E N. How do you spell Kylie? K Y L E E. <laughs> How do you spell Kayla? K A Y L A. Okay. So at 608, you texted your daughter Kristen. Let me just get it. What you doing upstairs? And what you was W A T C H A. Doing upstairs, correct? Yes, sir. And then three minutes, you didn't get a response to that? No, sir. Three minutes later, you, you texted, you need to get up, sweetheart. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, did you also text your mother as it relates to that particular time period when you didn't get a response from Kristen and she was sick? Yes, sir. Did that concern you? Yes, sir. What did you text your mom and I, when? I I believe it was around 6, 11. Well, let's not believe. Look at your phone oh, yes, and sir. tell me when you texted your mom. I texted my mom at... <sighs> Sorry, sir. I texted her at 6, 11. Is Kristen up? 
Okay. And your mom replied when? At 612 and said, yep. Okay. And then I wrote at 612 also, I was going to come up to wake her up. Sorry. Okay. So at least by then you understood whatever you were inquiring about Kristen or whether she was up, she had to get up. You were satisfied in your mind that that yes, situation sir. was taken care of. Now, I want to take your attention back to 606. Yes, sir. Two minutes before you tested Kristen, what you doing upstairs, you tested what you doing to Kayla, didn't you? I'm asking, yes, sir. Did you tell the judge the circumstances of how you texted Kayla? You haven't texted with her since uh, January 22nd, how all of a sudden after court you texted what you doing? Your Honor, I... <laughs> Excuse me. I was very shook and distraught with court. I went to work. I seen my daughters. They were sick. I went in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> I went in my phone. I hit K. I was trying to text my daughter. I realized I wrote what shit and I seen doing. I realized it went blue. So and I seen it wasn't Kristen. I honestly tried to hit X to erase the message and I hit return. It sent the message. I immediately freaked out, went into my phone, tried to delete the message, thinking that it wouldn't send because it did not say delivered. And then that's when I proceeded to text my daughter to make sure my kids were okay. I thought I caught it in time. Okay. So you screwed up at 606. Wait, I, I'm not quite understanding though. You went to text your daughter. Yes, sir. You saw that you accidentally texted Kate. Well, as I was texting your- Am I right or not? I want to understand. I, well, okay. after I wrote what you're doing, I realized that it was Kayla and not Kristen. Okay. And I tried, if you look on our iPhone, so where the X is, there's a blue bump below it. I, I instantly started shaking because I realized I was not Kayla. And I, I promised to the court, I would try to hit X. And I, I sent it on accident. And then I went into my phone trying to stop it because it did not show delivered. So I thought I was still blocked like I had been on the phone. I did not know I was even unblocked. I tried to erase it to stop the message from going, Your Honor. I did not intentionally. I was more worried about my kids and I was shook. You, I was, Your Honor, I, I heard what you said loud and clear. I have full custody of both my daughters and I was not trying to make you look stupid or anything. I did not mean to disrespect the court. It was 100% accident because my kids had 101.5 uh, fever. She was laying down and it was just a very bad day, sir. Sir, and if you were to give your phone to this detective right now, would you be okay with him doing a forensic analysis of he that can phone? Have my phone, you sir. Could dump it right this afternoon right and now. find out 100%. what exactly you did in that regard. A hundred percent. So you sent a text to Kayla, correct? Yes, sir. He didn't mean to. No, sir. Okay. I have too much to lose right now. I would not disrespect you, Your Honor. I promise you. Okay. It's not a question of disrespecting me. I'm no, I understand, Your Honor. Me. Well, I know I didn't. Exactly. I just, nothing to do with it. No, I meant or, or to even contact her I, is what I meant, but sir. It, 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 point well taken. Again, aside from any respect, you did not intend not to contact did I. Caleb. In fact, your attention was to the absolute contrary. I promise. Not to have anything to do with her. Okay, 100%. I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the, the circumstances of this afternoon, okay? You and I were speaking by phone as I was heading to, to this court from my location in Holland, correct? Yes, sir. And I told you my estimated arrival time, correct? Yes, sir. And when I pulled up, I had you come in my vehicle, correct? Yes, sir. And we discussed how it is that when you went to text somebody with a starting counsel, initial. Listen, I know there's no prosecutor here, but still, you can kind of not believe quite okay. as much. Okay. Okay. okay, so we discussed the allegation of an unintended recipient of a text. Yes, sir. Letters with a K, correct? Yes, sir. And using your phone, we showed how you could go to text John, but hit me instead. Okay, so you sent me a text from your phone in my car? That's still leading me. Okay, what did you do in my car? Uh, when you pulled up, sir, shows on camera, you pulled up next to me and my mother. I got in your car. We started discussing. There's text right here that you texted from my phone at 139 saying, hey, John, just to show it go through your phone so you can understand the green and the blue or yes the green and the blue matter of the text messages and how somebody could mistake john for jeff or jay uh, yes sir and that is at what time 139 sir okay so your phone says 139 and my phone would say 139 yes yes and sir. supposedly a minute later you called k 
Kayla? Counsel. Come on. Well, I know. Baby. Okay. So you were in my car for how long? Roughly five minutes, and then we're on camera coming in, okay. sir. So whatever the camera shows out there as to when we pulled up and when we entered the court was how long you were in my car, aside from the, the time that you texted me at 139. Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't cause anybody to call Kayla? You didn't call Kayla? No, sir. In fact, if you look at your phone, there's not going to be any phone calls since the time you were in my, my view. No, sir. Um, I have nothing for Do you know the owner of the phone by any chance? I'm just asking. No, sir, I do not. This, you have to even let me finish. Oh, I'm question. sorry. Of 734. 508-2766. Do you know? No, sir, I do not. Are you sure? Um, the, I use number. I do not recall anybody with that. I can look in my phone context, but I do not I do not know that number. No, sir. I would never have anybody call either. You're sir. telling us that you did not call Kayla and say leave. I, no, sir, I did not. Do you know who did? No, sir, I do not. Your Honor, at the, uh, at, at, um, I was gonna call you as a witness, but you could probably do it right here. Yeah. Well, no, I wanted to be a witness. I wanted to be a witness. Okay. okay. Well, I have no further questions. If you, Your Honor, has no, more I don't have any other questions. We can recall or whatever. Yeah. You can have a seat. Do you have any other questions? Yeah. You want to come on? Sure. Raise your right hand. You soundly swear firm that the penalty is perfect. The testimony we give in these proceedings will be to hold to yourself. You've got. I do. I have a good mind to call that phone number right now. I might just do that. Yeah, please do. Go, I will. Go ahead and tell it. Your Honor, at the defense's request, uh, I looked into that phone number, contacted one of the other detectives at the police department. Uh, we put it in our investigative tool um, to find out where the number came from. The number is registered as a bandwidth number which in in my experience and training and experience is commonly used to masquerade these are um unregistered numbers that people can grab the number um and masquerade that the number is actually coming from a different, a different device it's not attached to a device so somebody can use that to disguise absolutely the fact that they're calling from they're the one calling even though it's not from their phone absolutely well, if I may judge, so it would, let's just assume for the moment that Steve used this phone to call her, it would, it would, instead of showing up Steve's number, it would show up this masking number, correct? I can't say that that device would record, would, would depict that a phone call was placed from that using a bandwidth number. I, I don't have the expertise to, to say that. Well, you can certainly tell whether a phone call was placed from this phone. Absolutely not. No, no, no. whether a, a, a call was made at at one forty this afternoon from this phone. I cannot. Well, you you might not be able to determine whether it was from seven three four five zero eight two seven six six, but you can tell whether a phone call was placed. No, I cannot. Okay, so you don't have the expertise, or it's impossible. I'm saying that I don't have the expertise. No. You know where Mr. Mr. Crane uh, was this afternoon at 140? I do not. Okay, so you don't have any idea as whether he was sitting in my car. I don't. Would you? Is that parking lot surveilled? I believe so. Would you care to look at the surveillance tape and determine when he entered my car and when he exited my car? I would look at it if if that's what the judge would like me to do. Well, I think it's pretty important if the the, the suggestion is that my client made a phone call and told the complaining witness to leave. And I think that's a crime. It's not just a bond violation. This is a witness intimidation. That's a crime. And lying about that. I know, but finish your question. Okay. So if we could take a break in this hearing, you go to a resort and look at the cameras and find out when he got in my car, when he got in my car, when we both came into this courthouse. I believe that it would say that. I, 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 I don't know for sure. But even if he was in your car, that wouldn't tell me whether he placed the call or not. 
unless I took the stand and testified as an officer of the court as to what happened in my vehicle. Judge, you know, we're so far afield now on the, on the realm and, and the cusp of perjury that I think that this is vitally important and I'm willing to have this detective do whatever is necessary for as long as necessary to determine when Mr. Crane was in my vehicle for how long and when we exited. And I will testify as to what we what took place in that vehicle. The, the suggestion that I suborned a, a crime, that I someone's want a party to. suggesting that you suborned perjury or suborned any type of, were a conspirator to commit a crime, obstruction of justice, intimidation of a witness, whatever you want to call okay, it. Okay, well, I appreciate that. that. Okay, I appreciate that. So, but, well, I mean, come on. You, 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 well, you know, it's very difficult. You, you know, wait a second. Do you have any other questions? No, I don't. Do you have anything else? I don't, Your Honor. Go get those witnesses in here. Okay. Well, I don't really necessarily want anybody to testify, but I suppose we could call Ms. Ducal if that's if the court wanted to hear from her relative to, you know, she did hedge her bet at the end, as I believe. Well, you, you asked that the witnesses be sequestered. I'm just wondering who you wanted me to call, bring up for you, whatever you wanted me to do. Well, and again, this is how we're getting to, uh, approaching the realm of, you know, burdens of proof. And, Discharges of saying, I, mean, I, I don't know who's who. You let me worry about that. Okay. But I, I could have done one of two things just so this record is clear. I did not have to afford him a hearing immediately. I did not want to wait till Tuesday. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office is so incredibly overstaffed, they could not have sent me anybody unless I made jurors wait in the, in the juror assembly room tomorrow because it just so happens Mr. K's at the here. Well, it, I was trying to get to the bottom of this as quickly as I could so I could make a decision as to whether or not there was a violation of the bond without having to have him sit in jail for five days. So I just need this to be clear. Judge, I respect that. And okay. I'm with you. And I thank you. Okay. So okay. you so, asked when Ms. Duco, uh, Ms. Uh, I, mean, I suppose in light of the testimony, we can ask her, we call her to stand and ask her how sure she is about the voice that she claims she heard. Because I believe at the end, she hedged a bet of it and said, I believe so. But but she was, but hang on, but you asked, I, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You asked when she was testifying that the victim's advocate, are there, that both of them leave, right? That's what you asked. You asked to sequester witnesses. Yes. Ms. Duco was already on the stand. Correct. So who do you did you want to call one of them? Well, I if you don't, you don't. We could call Anna Duco to the stand, but then that would have uh, Kayla Duco be sequestered. Okay. Is that what you want? I want your client. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I think if we're going to get to the bottom of what come on, did or did not yeah. happen at 140. Ms. Duco, Kayla, why don't you have a seat out there, please? Come on, right up here to the witness chair, please. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. You soundly swear a firm and repentance of perjury. The testimony will give in these proceedings will be the whole truth of God. Yes. Can you have a seat and spell your complete name for me? My name is Anna. Last name is Gardner. Now I got married last year. So it's G-A-R-D-N-E-R. -E and what was your maiden name? Duplo. D-U-C-L-O. And so Kayla is what relation? She's my cousin. All right. Were you, you, you were initially, initially in here. Yes. When Anna testified that there was a phone call received sometime around 140 or 146 this afternoon. Yes, sir. From a phone number 5082766. Were you not? Yes, I answered the call. And why did you answer the call? The phone was next to me. We were. She was talking with Rachel and going over stuff and it started ringing. And I said, should I answer it? Because it was a number we did not know. And you have to put that phone on speaker. So I answered it and hit speaker the speaker button. Because if you hold it to your ear, you can't hear anything. That speaker on top is broken. So I hit answer and hit speaker. It was on the table in front of everyone. And it was like you heard chatter for a second and then leave. And then it hung up. Do you know Mr. Crane? Um, I know him. Not like 
close with him, but I know him. He's been in my house. I've been in his house. He's been with my cousin for years. So yes. Okay. And do you recognize his voice? Yes. Can you identify who the caller was? Basically? It did sound like him, yes. Of course, I can't say 100% because it was not his phone number, but it did sound like him. And nobody has called that phone except for the text she got from him and the dentist office and the courts. So I answered it because I wasn't sure if it was going to be someone from a police station since because she was called from the police station that we had to come here today. So that's why I answered. Do you have any questions on her? I do. You indicated that there was chatter for a second? Yeah, it was like you just heard like a like background like noise, you know, like just noise in the background when you answer a call. Like it wasn't dead silent in the background. And chatter. then you heard leave and then it clicked. Chatter in the sense of people talking in the background? I don't know if it was people talking. It was just noise. I guess chatter was the wrong word, but just like noise in the background for a split second. I said hello. Noise yeah. in the background, and then all you heard was leave, and okay, then the you phone said hello. Yes, I said hello. Okay. When and I answered the phone call. So it wasn't Anna didn't take control. Of the I am phone Anna. Phone. Yes. I'm sorry. Kayla didn't take control of the phone. No. Once you answered. Correct. It was just on the center of the table. Okay. On speakerphone. And would it surprise you to learn that that Kayla didn't mention anything about chatter or any other noise besides leave? No, it would not surprise me. She's been very flustered these last couple of weeks. So, all right. You know where, where Mr. Crane was this afternoon at one forty? I do not know. Okay, you came you came here with Kayla or no? Yes, I drove her here. Okay, and when you got here, you, did you see Mr. Crane's mother's vehicle? That it was not here yet. It pulled in as we were walking in the door. Okay, so you did see Mr. Crane pull in. I saw his mother's vehicle. If that's who he was with, yes. Okay, what time was that? I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. We got here at about 1.30, I think it was about then. Oh, you don't know what I got here. No, I do not. Nothing for the truth. Is there anything you would like me to ask him, Sergeant, to ask her? I don't think so, Your Honor. Ma'am, thank you very much. You can step down. I'd like you to do me a favor and send Kayla back in. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And you are still under oath, okay? The phone that you have now, when did you acquire that phone? Which one? The one that I'm the using? The one that you were called on this afternoon. Um, we got, we're on the same plan. We got it maybe three years ago. I've had that number for maybe three years now. Okay, I thought you said something to the effect the only one that's called you was, I think you said the court and your dentist. Didn't you say your dentist? Yeah, no one's been calling me. No one's been, I've been my, myself. I haven't. Did, did you see Mr. Crane on your way into the courthouse today? As I was walking in, he pulled in in his mom's Jeep. Like he was pulling in right as I was walking in. How long have you two been together? It would be almost five years. And, and you said, Mr. McCarty is correct. You did say, I believe it was his voice. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what that means. I want to be sure. Are you certain? 100% sure? Just the tone, the way it was said to me. Like, I believe it was him. Just the way it was said, the tone in the voice, the sound. Do you have any other questions? What did, what did you hear before leave? It was just leave. And, and then hung up. Anything else? No, no, no. You can sit, step down. I can. Do you have any other witnesses that you want to present? Any other witnesses you want me to make come up here and testify? Well, you know, to the extent necessary, I'd like this detective to, to look at the surveillance camera, unless you want to take judicial notice of the fact that we were in my car at the time in which this, this call was allegedly made to this witness. I think it further... A follow-up in that regard would be do do a, a dump of this of the, the witness's phone to determine who called her, when and on what frequency. If she's had that phone for three years, the testimony this afternoon and nobody calls her but the court and the desk. And I think that stretches the bounds of credulity. I mean, the upshot of this, Judge. I, I, given, I, I, I'm really concerned about this at this point. Yeah, I am too. I the, know, hang on. the upshot of, 
of one of the, the hang on, let me finish. Anybody who's listening to me on Tuesday, well, I never really said I find that there's a bond violation. Anybody who was listening to me would have known, or I did a horrible job out of explaining myself, that there was no doubt in my mind, but that Mr. Crane had contact purposely. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. I did not want to revoke the release. I did not want to forfeit the bond. I don't know that I used the word that you used in court or, can, or, or about anybody who was listening, but I do know that I made it abundantly clear I wanted there to be no contact. To say that I was shocked this morning when I'm <clears throat> receiving this testimony And now, so what I'm left with, Mr. McCarty, is two things. I'm left with somebody now telling me that they texted her accidentally. Which I can't imagine doing after a judge just talked to me eight hours early. And that somehow, some way, somebody called right when she's in court and said, leave. It was neither Mr. Crane nor anybody else affiliated with Mr. Crane. I'm 64 years old. I don't know how long I've had a cell phone now, but I don't ever remember just having somebody call me up, say, leave, and then hang up. And how ironic it happened when somebody is in a courthouse. Now, Mr. Crane, I found to be very unbelievable the other day. I really did. He, he pushed all the buttons. He pushed all the buttons of, of what I've learned in my career here as to why and how people lie or how I can detect liars. So somehow, some way, within four or five minutes, the time that she's supposed to come in, maybe 10, I think I initially told everybody to be here at two, but I don't remember. Or 15 minutes while in a courthouse, while within a few minutes of driving through the parking lot into the courthouse and sitting in the courthouse, I either have to be that she's totally contrived the story, which has been corroborated by her cousin to the tune that somebody called and said leave or or suddenly somehow some way somebody called and said leave even though she probably has never received such a call at least i have at a very crucial time when everybody knew that i was summoning everybody for a bond buy I would have thought, I don't want to know what he told you, that's attorney-client privilege, but I would have thought if I violated a no-contact provision that a judge said, and I can't imagine doing that accidentally, that I would have called my lawyer. In other words, his defense seems to be he was intending to text somebody else and I accidentally texted this young man. And tried to understand it. I thought he did. And then somehow, some way, she gets this call to leave while she happens to be in the courthouse from the phone. And, and Mr. Crane. Well, so I'm going to let you argue. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not directing this detective to do any investigation. If you want to do that, you can do that. If you want to uh, ask them to get the surveillance video, you can feel free to do that. But I'm going to make this decision now. I think it's that important, that serious, that when somebody was told not to have contact, did have contact, the judge chastised them for five minutes, 
and 10 hours later he's going out and having contact and then so so incredibly she gets this call leave right when she's in the courthouse to testify regarding the bond violation now i grant you you don't have a smoking gun where there's 20 witnesses watching somebody pull a trigger but if that isn't circumstantial evidence that he committed a violation of the no contact provision intentionally i don't know what is so i'm going to listen to your argument and i'm going to make up my mind but he scares me He's, put your sorry, hand sorry, down. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I've seen every type of person come in here and try to tell me things that just aren't true. Now, I thought I was pretty good at determining who was a liar before I got here. And I got to tell you, you cannot sit and listen to 250,000 cases over the course of 29 years and not become exceedingly good at it. It's almost impossible. So just let your lawyer do his job. So, so that's what you've got to contend with. This is not personal with you, Mr. McCarty. It's your client. Your client. Your client is not listening to instructions from judges. And this is not personal. I, I, I mean, I love it when people say your court. I'm not, nobody's ever here. Never one time in 29 years have I sat here and said M-Y-C-O-U-R-T not once. Nobody's ever heard me say that because it isn't mine. I don't see a deed on the wall. Nobody's gifted me, willed this, and this is not about me. I just happen to be this guy that somebody trusted 29 years ago, and people continue to trust to sit here. This is about our system, though. And I'm not going to put up with people that think they can make their own rules. So you got a lot to argue and contend with here because I'm not changing my bond unless you do some real fast talking here. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Well, certainly my intent is not to talk fast or slow or anywhere between to try to arrive at the truth and justice here. Of course. And the truth of the matter is my client sent a text to Kayla at 6.06 p.m. on Tuesday, the day we were in court. Now, another truth is if you look at that phone and do a forensic dump that I've offered, and I'll consent to release of it this, this moment while he's in custody or anywhere in between, that he attempted to unsend that and thought he had done it. Otherwise, he might have called me and said, hey, I just screwed up. But he didn't. What he did do is after he sent an unintended or a text to an unintended recipient, he immediately then turned around at 6.08 and texted his daughter. And then again at 6.11, and not hearing from her, texted his mother. Now, what he's, he's now establishing like an alibi for this. He's establishing a defense when he gets called into court on a bond violation. Oh, I've got it all figured out. I'll show him this is what this is, you know, why I did it. That's preposterous. A man plows snow for a living, but he's sophisticated enough to some use some robocall as he's sitting in my vehicle. As we're as we're told about a hearing about an hour and a half ago, he put it all together and figured out how to do a robocall and called this complainant and said, "Leave." How is that even possible? I didn't say he did it. Well, the, the, I, now you, if you listen to me carefully, I said him or somebody else. Well, okay, but they didn't say somebody else's voice. They said it was his. And this witness sat up there and told you by, on the basis of one word. And while she hesitated to say she can't be completely certain, I believe it's him. Now, Judge, we, I didn't, we didn't even find out about this until l later this morning. Well, no, they, and right, and so, but but you have to understand. So, how is it that he established this timeline of text back at six oh eight and six and eleven, and then six fifteen with his mother, thinking that this was going to come up? I mean, that's just that's like creating the alibi, you know, before the the, the crime is even reported. This this doesn't make any sense, Judge. It just doesn't. So all these were just a mistake. It's your no, 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 absolutely. Hey, Judge, the other day I went to to text a, a, an opposing counsel, Chris and sent her a copy of the Michigan Bad Government that we got in surrendering of your license. And you know who I sent it to? Chris Creighton, my son's head football coach at Eastern Michigan. Now that was embarrassing that I sent a private communication between me and opposing counsel, Chris Anderson, 
and I sent it to the head football coach at Eastern Michigan. And I'm a lawyer. And I'm here to tell you, I make mistakes. Of course. And 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 so he he he's got three K's in his life, Kayla, Kristen, uh, Kylie, and he sent it to the wrong one. And as soon as he realized it, he tried to undo it and thought he did. And then he went and 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 took care of what he tried to do, his his business, so to speak. Now and that can be that's all on that phone. And it can be analyzed and be this we're not trying to hide anything. You can you can feel free to have okay. it analyzed. But judge this I'm not whole, ordering them to, and the court's not about to undertake that. Okay, I appreciate that. And and but what I'm suggesting is to entertain the possibility that this was unintended. That he did it, but he didn't need to do it. And it doesn't make any sense. Not having any contact since January twenty second, all of a sudden you read him the riot act to come to Jesus speech on Tuesday, and then he's gonna text her what you doing? Well, he did have contact with her since the 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 nature of the hearing happened that was not that was contact since january 22nd well it, to the extent I'm you're talking about the contact that had occurred that i heard about on tuesday which was what the 14th tuesday was the 14th and i, think and I believe the, the contact the, uh, now listen you had you probably I'm not i'm sure you're busy but i probably only had hundred people in front of me since he was in here Tuesday, if not more. But my recollection is that the contact had happened the day before. That no, was it, was, my, it was the week before. Week before. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, 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 so, that's so that's not truthful when you're saying that he didn't have any contact with her from January 23 until the night of the 14th. Well, let me, let me clarify that and specify. He didn't have any text phone call, text conversation with her since, you know, it's, it, frankly, like the majority of us how we communicate. And to me, it doesn't make any sense how he would go from January to 22nd to Tuesday, uh, the 14th. I know a lot of this doesn't make well, sense. Every day. I know. But Every I, single day. I think. It, it, uh, uh, no, I agree with you. A lot of it doesn't make any sense. Right. It, but it, it further doesn't make sense that my client is somehow sophisticated enough to create a defense to a, a violation of probation that's not even been, you know, asserted yet. Uh, and we don't even know about it until this morning. And then somehow uh, between getting off of work and having his mother give him a ride here and me coming down from Howell, he's sophisticated enough again to create this robocall and a, a a message of me. Court's convinced. Did I let you finish? Hey, Judge, I'm not going to stop the train. I, I know. Get it. I'm just asking. I'm just asking right. if I let you finish. The court is convinced somebody called and said Lee. The testimony was that it, the belief was that it was the defendant. I told the defendant not to have contact. He was told that by my pre my coach judge here, my colleague who set the bond, I believe, initially. Um not to have contact. He had contact last week. I I admonished him on Tuesday. I didn't forfeit his bond. I didn't revoke the release. And I'm just convinced he had contact, not on one, but on two occasions. Now three, if you include the one last week. The bond's forfeited. I won't set uh, 10,000 cash. It is going to be 4,000 cash. Do it again, and we're gonna have a big problem. Take her out of your phone, do whatever you gotta do. 4,000 cash, bond conditions otherwise continued. I will see everybody here. Counsel, I signed oh, your yeah, order. Yeah, thank you. you have a funeral, I understand. I'm sorry for your loss. We're going to do it March the 7th at 10, but you can't ask me for another adjournment, okay? Good luck, sir. You're going to have to post your money or have a seat over there. That's fine. Thank you, Jeff. March 7th at 10, okay? And I'm sorry for your loss. Good luck, everybody. Good morning, Your Honor. Omar Shah on behalf of the people, PA 6332. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Jeff McCarty, P42633. Name, sir? Good morning, Your Honor. Stephen Michael Crane. All right, so this is going to be a waiver. Is that correct? It is, Judge. Is that what you want to do, Mr. Crane? Yes, sir. All right, so you have the right to a preliminary examination on this charge. Uh, this is a five year felony by waiving your right to an exam. You're waiving the requirement that the people show that the crime was committed and that you were the one who probably committed the crime and you'll automatically be bound over for further proceedings to the Wayne County Circuit Court. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Anybody force you to give up your right to an exam? 
No, and, no. and you still wish to do that? You still wish to do that? Forfeit, yes, Your Honor. Oh, pardon? You're asking if I want to do Yeah, you still wish to give up your right to yes, an exam. Sir. And yeah, nobody's, nobody's forced you to do that, correct? Yes, All right, I'm going to accept the waiver. I find the waiver has been made voluntarily and understanding that you're bound over for further proceedings to the circuit court. The AOI date will be March the 21. And then it says people need to address bond. Yes, Your Honor. Um, as the court knows, there's been a no contact, no go to order with the complaining witness. We have I've spoken to the OIC who indicated to me that there has been any contact, and I refer to the OIC to make a statement in regards. To Not since the last hearing. Can you stand up and tell me your name, please? Sergeant Cavazos, uh, Trent PD. What do we have? Uh, there's information that was brought forward that um, the the defendant was was working with a, a family member of the victim to um, find out her whereabouts. So it was indirect contact. Can you be more specific? Um, it, the information didn't specifically come to me. It came to one of the other officers that relayed that information to me. That he was trying to get a hold of her through another- Through, through her sister. Is the sister here? The sister's not here, Your Honor. I'm going to make no assumptions, Mr. Crane. And make no assumptions. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble if you're having contact. I promise hey, you listen know. to me. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble if you have contact. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble if you have contact. I, I want to make sure you understand what I just said. 100%. You are going to get yourself in a lot of trouble if you continue to have contact. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying yes, to you? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, I don't mean anything by this, but uh, except to say this. If I'm going to start revoking bonds or having hearings, I'm going to need something more than an officer telling the detective in charge that the sister was contacted when the sister isn't here. That's all I'm telling you, counsel. So I don't, I don't know what else anybody would like me to do, but I'm not going to, based on what I have here, revoke the bond. If somebody brought in the sister and the sister testified under oath, then I could make a factual determination. And that's the way I feel about it. Um, if there's something else that you want to bring forth, I'll be more than happy to listen to you. But I don't, I can't, based on just what I've hear, heard here, start revoking bonds. It's not appropriate. Is there something else that no. anybody has? Nothing for the, for the people. So in the future, if this happens, you can you can ask the sister to come in on the date of the exam. Um, I, I know Mr. McCarty is going to talk to his client further and tell him, that by having contact, he's doing nothing but making this case worse. I already found that he violated the no contact provision at least once, I think twice. And he's going to do nothing but make this worse for himself. And he has a GPS tether. And he's going to end up in custody if he keeps doing this kind of thing. You're looking at other charges, too, if any of this is true. I'm not going to counsel you on that. You've got a lawyer. That's what I'm doing. March 21 is your AOI date. Otherwise, I'm continuing the bond, 10,010%. I don't need to reiterate the bond conditions again, I don't believe. We've gone through this repeatedly. You cannot leave the state without the consent of the court. You cannot violate any law. You must appear in court as directed. Um, your bond is currently at, I believe, 40,010%. No. Wait a minute. How much did he post here? 
I thought I said 10,000 cash, did I not? I think the initial one, Your Honor, was 10,000 cash. February 16th, I'm not saying I'm incapable of making a mistake. I said, I said 10,000 cash. You, you said 10,000 cash, Your Honor, and then we had the hearing and then you reduced it to 4,000 cash. I see. Correct. Yes, yes, 4,000 cash. I apologize. So it's a 4,000. You're right. That was at the initial bond violation swearing, in, I believe. So I apologize. My mistake. The $4,000 cash bond is. And Judge, at that last hearing, we discussed my client being allowed to return to the residence. The complaining witness no longer resides there. She was going to do a standby to effects that she wanted. I don't know if she exercised that right, but my client would like to return to his residence. And can you come up here, Ms. Duclos, please? Good morning. Your name? Uh, I handle a lot of cases. I don't remember. Did you vacate that residence? Um, my cousin Anna and his sister Stacy were supposed to be in communication, and she never answered us back to let us know that she could let us in. Wait a minute. Slow down. Tell me that again. Yeah. Slow down. We were given Stacy's number. I don't know who Stacy is. You gotta, um, you gotta start Steven, out. Steven's sister. Okay. Uh, do you live there? there no, you don't have any intent to go back. I would just like to get a little bit of my stuff and that's it. Do you have any ownership interest in that? No. Who owns the house? Well, Stephen rents it, yeah. Stephen rents it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Give me a bond violation. I mean, a new bond sheet. All right. Now, this is the concern, Mr. McCarty. I'm going to show you that we have that. He has a tether on, right, Mr. McCarty? He does. The problem I'm, we're going to have to work out is I don't want, he's going to have to go back to the county before he goes there because they're going to, uh, I'll, let, me, let me just make some notes and then I'll come back to it, okay? Is it D-U-C-L-O or D-U-C? Yes, D-U-C-L-O. Lisa? Yes. I want to make sure we take care of this so he's not taken into custody. I want him to go back there. I want him to let him go back there effective. Who's staying there now? I'm not there. I don't know. No one, Judge. What do you have there? Just the rest of my personal things. You've never returned there since this incident? No, I didn't want to be there by myself because they were Okay, ready. okay. Um, he has a tether on. I don't want to, I don't want to violate his tether. requirements. Do 
Is there somebody else that uh, uh, could let Ms. Duclo in with with a with a um, a police officer being in the prop? Hang on one second. With a police officer allow doing a standby, I don't really want Mr. Crane there as of this minute. Detective Cavazos, can you or some can you get an officer over there at a time that's convenient for everybody today? Sure. How about if we say that? Can you get everything out of there? Go there at one o'clock. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So here's what I'm going to do. The you're not to be within two miles of the victim. Her. <clears throat> You're not to be within two miles of the victim, her residence, or place of employment. You're not going to be released. I mean, I already wrote that. You're not to be released until fitted with a GPS tether. Uh, G defendant permitted to return to 32 Roarig in Trenton. But no later than 6 p.m. today. No I'm sorry, no earlier than 6 p.m. You, you're going to have to go down to the tether unit. No contact with Kaylee Duco. Not, uh, not to possess firearms or dangerous weapons and no contact with prosecution witnesses. So you guys can plan on going there at 1 o'clock today. You and Detective Cavazos or whoever else from the department. And, and who is this in the back again, Mr. McCarty? The, the sister's mother. So his sister Stacy said she could have tried to one o'clock. Okay, and that's Stacy who? What's her last name? Crane. Okay, so Stacy Crane will be there. And I'm going to uh, have to send you back to the tether unit. So Lisa, you need to give him a piece of paper that tells him that I'm changing the bond conditions and he can go back to 32 Roarig on or after, I'm sorry, on or after 6 p.m. tonight. I can actually make it, make it 3 p.m. Everybody's gonna be there at one, after 3 p.m. today. And uh, the $4,000 cash bond is continued. Your arraignment on the information. Is there anything else you wanted, counsel? No, thank you, Judge. Nothing for this Nothing else, Mr. McCarty. So no, four thousand cash, March the twenty-first at nine a.m. Take those conditions very seriously. Don't go back or near there until you go over and get the GPS tether. And it's at least three o'clock. You're gonna have to make it to your way to the county before then. They'll give you a letter down the hall. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. It has been in Judge Thomas's courtroom in the Third Circuit Court. For Wayne County. And there has been lots of pretrials and canceled hearings. And I kept waiting for there to be some kind of settlement or plea deal or something. And then finally, it was scheduled for a jury trial in January. So I thought, okay, that's different, but we'll see. He was actually charged with violating a TPO, his third offense. So it was a pretty serious charge, which is why it was bound over to circuit court. Then I checked today to see what the outcome was because Judge Thomas is no longer live streaming and the case was dismissed. All done. See you later. Bye-bye. It's over. Well, that sucks. But what can you do? The end.